Hey art nerds, I'm back at you with another watercolor palette review. Today we're taking a look at the Royal Talons Rembrandt watercolor set. This is the 12 half pan metal basic set, although they are available in a variety of different interesting sets, as well as different set sizes. So this set was purchased off of Amazon since they had a really good price, and I look forward to unboxing it with you guys today. So I'm really excited to check these out. I reviewed several Royal Talons products in the past and I've often had mixed feelings about the quality. I reviewed their student grade Van Gogh and recently reviewed the Van Gogh Dusk line and I'll link both in the description below. Speaking of the description below, there's going to be links to all sorts of things related to this video. So I hope you guys will check out the description. So I have high hopes for the Rembrandt line as it's Royal Talons' professional line and I'm looking forward to playing with the best they have to offer. So these are made by Royal Talons. They are $74.97 on Blick, $44.60 through, through Jackson's, and $54.65 through Amazon. And the Amazon listing ships through, or rather, the Amazon listing is shipping from Jackson's. And as I said, I ordered this set on Amazon through Jackson's Art because it was a really good deal, under $60. These are available in tubes and half pan sets. And the uh, Rembrandt line has 120 total colors. This is inclusive of the half pans as well as the tubes themselves. The packaging is quite professional and attractive. We have a belly band, as you guys saw me remove that. A sturdy cardboard presentation box, a custom metal tin, and then the half pans themselves are wrapped. Looking at the world behind the reality, feeling how elements adapt to a single well, blah, 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 something inspiring that I'm sure you guys are able to read faster than I was able to do so. But you guys can see it comes in an attractive metal palette, has little feet on the palette, as well as a palette ring in case you guys are interested in plain air painting. And you can tell this isn't just your standard run-of-the-mill palette as it is custom embossed. And inside are 12 beautifully wrapped tasty little half pans that one should absolutely not put into your mouth. So Rembrandt watercolors promise ultimate tinting strength and maximum pigmentation, the highest degree of light fastness, finest pigments in pure quality, and these are in gum arabic. And the colors in this set uh, and you guys should definitely check the notes below because I will include the light fast information in those notes. And if they won't fit in the description, then I will put them in a Google Doc and link that as well for those of you who need to know all the information. But if you are new to my channel, if you're new to my unbox and swatch watercolor reviews, I basically review watercolors in two parts. We start with the unboxing, the swatching, talking about the pigments, talking about the packaging, and then in another video we do the field test where I paint a watercolor illustration in my style under real world conditions, usually on cotton rag watercolor paper. And that doubles as not only a review and demonstration, but also as um, just a tutorial in case you guys want to paint along. So not only does this set come with a beautiful metal tin and 12 beautiful colors, but you also get a travel brush, which we'll talk about a little bit more. The Van Gogh set also comes with a travel brush. So these are each individually wrapped. And something I like about the Rembrandt paints is compared to some of the other half pan sets I've reviewed in the past, is these are only wrapped in a single piece of wax paper. And this piece of wax paper has all the information you really need. There's even the pigment info, although that tends to be under the flap with these, so it's often obscured. So I went to the Royal Talons website for my pigment info, and as I mentioned, I'll link that down in the description for you guys. But many watercolor brands wrap their individual half pants in multiple layers. So you'll get a belly band of paper, then you'll get the foil wrapping, and then inside you may even get, or rather, on top of all of that, you may even get some cellophane, which generates a lot of waste. But something I like about this set is there's not really a lot of waste here. So the wrapper on each half pan includes the color number, the color name, the transparency info, the series number, and light fast information. The color number is also printed on the half pan 
So you can cross-reference these against the wrappers or against the website. The pigment info is under the flap and most of it gets obscured as you're unwrapping these. And there's room in the palette for about two more half pans. So the colors in this 12 color basic set are cadmium lemon yellow. It is semi-transparent series three and it uses PY35. Number 248 Azo Yellow Deep. It's transparent, it's series two and it uses pigment PY110. Number 305 Cadmium Red. It's semi-transparent, it's series number three, PR108. Uh, 336 Permanent Matter Lake. It's transparent, it's series two and it uses PR264 and PV19. 506 Ultramarine Deep. There's no info provided regarding the transparency. It's series one and it uses PB29, a very common choice for some Prussian blues and most ultramarine blues. We have 534 Cerulean Blue. It's semi-transparent series three and it uses PB35. 616 Viridian, there's no info regarding the transparency. It is series two and it uses PG18. We have 662 Permanent Green. It has no transparency info. It's Series 2, and it uses PG7 and PY154. We have 227 Yellow Ochre. Again, no info regarding transparency. It is Series 1, and it uses PY43 and PY42. We have 411 Burnt Sienna. Again, no transparency info. It is Series 1, and it uses PBR7. We have 416 Sepia. Again, no Series info or no light fastness info. Info. Series 1, it uses PBK7 and PR101. And we have 708 Payne's Gray. It's semi-transparent. It's Series 1, and it uses PBK6 and PB15. And all of the paints in this set have a light fastness rating of 3 plus marks, which denotes 100 years of uh, light fastness under museum conditions. You can see all of these colors are really vibrant in mass tone, which does lead me to believe they may contain a fair amount of optical brighteners. And I've really found that like with German watercolors, we do end up with a lot of optical brighteners in our watercolors. Like when I reviewed the Lucas 1862, I was surprised by just how muddy the water got. So I expect to see the same here. So these shift quite a bit in the metal palette and as I said there's room for two more half pans in here if you want to put in your white your black or if there's two colors you really like that are not included in this set so what I ended up doing after showing you guys this is I ended up taping these down with a little bit of washi tape I know there's tutorials here on YouTube on uh, how to get them to stay in the metal palettes without them shifting but with this much wiggle room I really felt the washi tape was a better option so next up we are moving on to swatching and I am swatching these on fluid 100 cotton rag watercolor paper it's a popular choice for me for my unboxing swatch videos and we're gonna do some transparency testing and for that I am using a black Copic this is alcohol based so theoretically the watercolor should not reactivate or negatively interact with the ink in any way shape or form that sometimes it doesn't work out that way for some reason some pigments reactivate the ink and I'm not really sure why but uh, just in theory, it should work together quite well. So I pre-activated all the half pans with just a little bit of water. And this kind of gives the gum arabic a chance to absorb the water and to loosen the pigments up. So you can see just a little drip of water here and there just to help get the colors moving, to get them activated, and to make it easier to swatch. I really want to give these watercolors the fairest chance possible. So this is something I do in most of my watercolor reviews. And you can see on my paintbrush tip, we have picked up a lot of color. So I'm doing a mass tone swatch at the top, and then we're gonna do a gradiated swatch going down. And then once that dries, we're gonna do another mass tone swatch down at the bottom. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for transparency. Are these colors as transparent as the transparency information would lead us to believe? How well do they gradiate out? Um, do they Do they turn kind of muddy? Do they become kind of weak as we've added water? I'm also watching my clean water cup off to the side there to see how quickly the water becomes muddy because that is a strong hint as to whether or not these are full of optical brighteners. 
And while optical brighteners can give you some really beautiful, bold, vivid colors, they do not layer well. And I have a whole blog post expa explaining why. Optical brighteners can lead to muddy waters and muddy watercolor paintings. I'll link that down in the description below as well. So all the colors in this set, save for Payne's Gray, are fairly prone. Oh, getting ahead of myself, y'all. So for swatching, these seem pretty opaque. And when pre-activated, a lot of pigment is picked up. You guys may have noticed that on the synthetic brush that I'm using for swatching. And it's a very soft synthetic brush. The water muddies really quickly with these, which again is a strong hint that these are using optical brighteners. Some colors are kind of muted and some of them just don't, you don't pick up as much color as you think they would. Like Viridian is really kind of weak. And these are very finely granulated. So if you're looking for granulating colors, these are not going to give you the nice sedimenting effects that you might be looking for. So here we have a lineup of 12 vibrant colors. This is them still wet. We're going to give them a chance to dry and check back in on them. And if you guys enjoy reviews like this one, you can support the work that I'm doing over on Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. All of the products from my reviews are purchased out of pocket out of my own money, unless otherwise disclosed. And this set was purchased out of pocket so that I could try using them. So if you enjoy tutorials or reviews like this one, consider supporting me over on Patreon. So now that these have had a chance to dry, it's time for the lift test and for this I'm using a flat synthetic brush, applying a little bit of water, doing a little bit of light scrubbing just to see if these lift up. And I found that all the colors in this set, save for the Payne's Gray, are fairly prone to lifting. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the Rembrandt set. The pros are you get 12 saturated colors, there's a nice color gamut, no space wasted on white or black, and that's just a personal pet peeve of mine. I like to mix my whites and I like, well, you can't mix your whites, but I like using gouache and I like to mix my blacks. And the set is stylish and well produced. It feels like a quality set. The cons are the colors seem like they're going to be prone to muddying. They look like they contain a lot of optical brighteners. So if you're looking for a watercolor set that packs a punch, if you paint in very limited layers and you don't do a lot of color mixing, this could be a great set for you. Um, it does seem comparable price wise to some of the other sets that are on the market. Just from this unboxing swatch alone, I wouldn't rank it in like my top five watercolor sets, but I also prefer uh, larger sedimentation, more pronounced sedimentation. I enjoy um, not so saturated colors. I want like more transparency so that I can do thinner glazes. And um, I don't know, just that's. <laughs> Hard to say until I do the field test. I feel like that was a bit of a cop out and I apologize for that. So before we say goodbye, I do want to do a quick comparison between the Rembrandt and the Van Gogh. So the Van Gogh are 
Royal Talons' student grade watercolors, the Rembrandt, is marketed as their professional grade. And um, this is not going to be a swatch comparison. If you guys are interested in a swatch comparison, let me know down in the comments below. I've done swatch comparisons for a few other brands between their professional line and their student line, so I am open to it. But I do want to know if there's interest. So both sets are the 12 color sets. The Van Gogh set does come with a white and a black. Both sets come with a travel brush. And the Van Gogh set does come in a metal tin. I just happen to have the plastic tin. The Van Gogh travel blush brush is slightly larger and the brush on the Rembrandt seems a little bit nicer. Red Sable is often code for synthetic, which is what the Rembrandt brush is supposed to be, is Red Sable. But the build quality on the Van Gogh seems nicer than the build quality on the Rembrandt. The Rembrandt feels a little bit cheaply built and some of the bristles were knocked out of place when I first opened it. So neither of the travel brushes are particularly well made and it's not, I would not use them. Um, I'm not usually a fan of the included brushes with watercolor sets though so maybe that's just my personal taste. The Van Gogh palette does feature a removable mixing palette built in. You can see that at the top and you can use the back of the brush to pry that out to clean it which makes it a little bit easier. When putting away the travel brushes, you do want to make sure you're careful about how you put them away. It's very easy to damage or ruin the travel brushes. And they are pretty neat in that you remove the back half and you just slot the brush inside of that. That back half extends the length of the brush and makes it more comfortable to hold. Um, the metal palettes do tend to rattle around, whereas the plastic palette is going to hold those half pans securely. And frankly, if you have a Van Gogh set and you want to replace it as you go with Rembrandt watercolors, you can just pry out those half pans using the travel brush and replace them as you use them up. That's often an economical way to slowly transition from student grade watercolors to professional grade watercolors. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Rembrandt watercolors are a hit or a miss? I'm definitely looking forward to field testing them in an upcoming video and I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that. It should be out in the near future. If you want to keep up with what I'm up to, you guys can do that by following me over on Instagram. I'm always sharing sneak peeks of my upcoming videos over there. And if you want to chat with me, you're welcome to join me in my art-centric Discord server, The Paint Box. I'll put a link down in the description for that as well. I'm also going to link some of my favorite watercolor reviews in case you guys are on the market for some great watercolor supplies. That way you can kind of compare and contrast what your preferences are. Me, I paint in a lot of layers. Some people would even say too many layers. So I want watercolors that are fairly transparent, that can hold up to layering and aren't going to turn to mud on my paper. Whereas these, I feel like might be very prone to lifting, might be very prone to turning to mud, and might cause a lot of problems for me. But if you only use a few layers in your watercolor, and if you're painting on a cotton rag watercolor paper, I think your experiences are going to be different and maybe better than mine. But I definitely look forward to putting these through their paces.
So remember to check the description below for a transcript of what was talked about in this video if you're a visual person rather than just an audio person. I'll have links in the description below as well if you'd like to order your own set. I do want to disclose that the Amazon link is an affiliate link, so I do see a small amount of money when you purchase through my Amazon links. However, the Blick and the Jackson links are not affiliate links, and I will say that the Jackson's website has a better price on these. So if you're interested in buying this set, I really recommend skipping Blix, skipping Amazon, and going straight to Jackson's and ordering through them. They also have a really wide array of watercolors. So if you're interested in expanding your watercolor boundaries, you might want to check Jackson's out. I have no affiliation with them. We have no sort of partnership. That's just my own experiences and the experiences of some of the chatters in the paint box. So take that as you will. If you enjoy videos like this, why don't you hit the subscribe button and stick around? I'm always releasing new water color reviews, new comic tutorials, and just new tutorials in general. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye guys!